Welcome to the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, where rude mechanicals do magic. Hello, I'm Bron Sage, Director of the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage. And today we have this nice chrome swing arm desk lamp on the bench. We're going to rewire it. As usual with this kind of lamp, there's no manufacturer's marks or names or anything like that. Leaves us without a clue as to who actually put this out on the market. Um, the cord, and this is original plug because it's riveted on, is Eagle, made in USA. So we can assume that this is an American-made lamp. For no other reason, for simply that. I uh, interrupt this video to bring you a late, actually very, very late breaking news. The lamp has been identified. When the uh, dealer picked it up, she told me that she had found that it was a Coke and Lowy uh, swing arm desk lamp, brass and nickel plated. Now, the Coke and Lowy company was created in 1946. They existed as an independent company up into the 90s. I understand they were bought out by some big conglomerate, which is what always happens. Uh, the design is by Walter von Nessen. And even though Coke and Lowe didn't start work until 1946, Walter von Nessen died in 1943. So, I'll leave that to somebody else to figure out how that works. Again, back to our video. And this elbow here swivels, and this swivels. This piece doesn't which is kind of unusual, but that does keep the lamp centered over the counterweight here, so that's probably why they did it that way. Oh, a little spider. Let's see if we can find him a new home. Okay, the spider's been rehomed with a young couple in their first apartment where the uh, rules don't allow pets over 10 grams. Each of the joints has a screw plug here at the top, which are fairly easy to get out. And the swivel here has one on the bottom as well. And one sign that this lamp has never been worked on before, all of these are still here. The unusual thing about wiring this kind of lamp, it's a job that you actually start in the middle. Now this little trick here of pulling it up and outside, that's the way we're going to go through the whole lamp. Which when I get to here, I again reach in and pull this piece down, working it to get a loop outside of the bend. And since I'm not going back in with this wire, I can just pull it all the way through. And that brings us up to the socket. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. Neither of them are very easy. Now since I'm taking it apart, I'm going to take the easy way the first time. Because the problem here is twisting the socket like this to get it out. Also twist the wire. So when you're going to put it back together, not really a good way to do it. Taking it off doesn't really matter much. And that's what you get when you install a wire 
by you know, a socket by twisting it on. That's how far it goes. The back plate on this socket is held in place with two screws. And because of the shape and the size of the shade, it's impossible to see those screws. But that's how we're going to have to put it back together anyway. Now before I start pushing the wire through here, there's a couple of small pieces of preparation that have to be done first. I'm using a cord set, so it comes with the uh, ends of the wires uh, already soldered, or tinned as I call it. And to keep them from getting separated and possibly snagging, I put a small piece of uh, shrink wrap on it. And that will make it a little easier to push it up through the pipe. And then off. Next, I check out my dental picks, which is going to be very important for pulling the wire through. This is the one I use for taking it apart. It's got a kind of a sharp tip here, so I don't use it for putting it back together. It doesn't really matter if you tear up the wire taking it out, but you don't want to tear up the wire putting it in. This one with these two different shaped hooks that I have bent on them is uh, going to be useful for pulling the wire up through the top. And the last piece to have handy is some paste wax because you're going to need some lubrication on the wire to get it around all these corners. Now it starts off like a regular wee wire, running it through the hole in the base, and I pull out about as much as I think I'm going to need for the whole arms, and just push it up through this pipe. Comes out the top here, and we're like at the so far so good stage. Now I apply some wax to my wire, give it a little bit of a bend, and work it into this first pipe. Now I can see down in here that the wire has made it all the way to this point, so I take the a chopstick and I just start working here trying to get this piece that loose piece of wire to come up through here and uh, it's just one of those fiddly things or sometimes it works like you really want it to the first time around and I go back push this through which of course has hit a snag come back here a little more wax on it There we go. We have it all the way through. That went remarkably easy. Now putting the light back together starts with a little blue thread lock on these threads and putting it all back together in the right order. I'm going to put this washer back on because this shade has to be left just loose enough that it can be turned but not so loose that it slips. And trying to assemble a light socket inside a shade is never easy. There's a little screw here on the socket. I 
wish this socket was a little tighter. So what I'm going to do is rotate this around and get it to where I can expose that screw with the shade moderately tight. And then tighten the screw. That should be enough to adjust the shade like they want it and not fall off. I went into the scrap bin and found some blocks that I could just knock together real quick. That'll hold this thing tight while I'm trying to wire it. Because even though it takes a little bit of time to put together a fixture or a jig like this, if it makes the job easier, it's worth the time to do it. Now we will return to the Sermon of the Lamp, which I repeat in every lamp video because it's that important. In the United States, all plugs intended to be used for lighting have a wide prong and a narrow prong. That's so they can only go into the outlet one direction. The wide prong goes to the wire on this side, which actually has ridges that you can feel with your fingers. The narrow prong goes to the smooth side. When you get all the way up to the socket, the ridged uh, wire goes underneath a silver colored screw and the smooth wire goes underneath the brass colored screw. And this is a matter of personal safety in the home, getting electrocuted and stuff like that, which nobody really wants. But you get the wire wrapped around the proper screw, you get it down there, and this socket's a little more difficult than most because the wires are down in this recess. But you wrap it around it clockwise so that when you tighten it down, turn the screw clockwise, it will pull the wire under the screw instead of pushing it out. Now you can see why I made this jig to hold this light in place because trying to wire a socket like this in midair and keep everything in position gets pretty difficult. Especially the part about getting the wire under the screw. Now the screws that hold the porcelain part to the metal part are held in place with these little paper washers. If you didn't have those on there, I'm not really sure this would even be possible. But what I'm going to do, my other hand off camera down here, is pulling the uh, cord. And now, holding it down, you just barely see the screw. Put the screwdriver in here. And start turning it. Get both of them started at the, together. Because when you're tightening these down, if the socket's a little bit cocked to one side or another, it'll tighten down or feel like it's tight, but it's actually crooked. So, okay, both of them tight, and the socket is in the proper position. A little bit more. There we go. Now I feed all this extra wire back down and use my chopstick again to give it a little extra push. Now I'll pull this bit down and we are ready to wire our switch. Now the switch, whether it's for a ceiling fixture, a floor lamp, chandelier, whatever, always goes on what we call 
the smooth wire. I can cut it loose here, pull it back. Now, in the Secret Underground Laboratory, all connections are soldered. Do not trust wire nuts, and I certainly don't trust twisting two wires together and wrapping them up in tape. And when I twist the wires together, I make sure that they are actually truly intertwined not just one wrapped around the other one like a snake flying up a flagpole. Because that's what gives you the best contact. Now I've got to heat up my soldering iron. I'm using a rosin core solder, which is the correct solder for any kind of electrical work. The rosin that's in the solder is kind of a detergent, they call it a flux. They make sure that uh, when it gets hot, it washes all the oil or grease that might, or wax that might be on the wires and ensures a good connection. And the last thing is to cover up this connection with heat shrink, which is a special kind of plastic tubing that when it gets hot, it shrinks. Much more reliable than electrical tape. And for a little bit of lab overkill, after I shrink it, I curl it back like this. Put another little ring of heat shrink over it and then shrink that as well. Now one last thing before we turn this back over and finish it up. Got to be some way to keep uh, this cord from getting yanked tight in case someone trips over the uh, cord in the dark. And uh, originally, they had this knot like this. don't really want to use this because the base is so shallow, and this may be a problem when uh, putting the felting on it. So instead, I've got a couple of wire ties here that I wrap around it. Give it a yank, pull it down tight, I mean, really tight, so it can't slip. And then clip it off, and there we go. We'll tuck this up in here so that when we put the felt on the bottom of it, it'll be nice and flat and smooth. Now, the last thing to do is put our caps back in. They don't have to be very tight, but you don't want them getting lost. Most of the lamps of this design I see have one or two missing. So, well, this is Bronze Age for the Secret Underground Laboratory. Thank you for sitting through this video with me on how to wire a swing arm lamp. This is a particularly pretty one. It'll be in an antique dealer's booth probably tomorrow afternoon. And uh, with the silver cord, uh, they believe that they'll probably get a much better price for it, which is why we're here today. So again, thank you very much. Appreciate you watching, and I hope to see you again in the next video.